Chapter 3 The Pacific Ocean looked completely different on the return trip. Instead of brilliant blue, it was slate gray and extremely choppy. The maverick bounced across the waves, with every bounce sending up huge jets of salt spray. Jessica was enjoying the wild ride. The wind and the surf, and the fact that Winston was at the other end of the boat, combined to clear her mind of the annoyance she had felt earlier. Isn't this fun? Jessica asked Ken. The wind practically grabbed the words right out of her mouth. What? Even though Ken was sitting right next to her in the boat's stern, he had to lean closer to hear her. Jessica didn't mind. This is fun, she repeated, putting her lips as near to Ken's ear as she could without actually touching it. Ken nodded. There's nothing like being near the water or on the water when a storm comes up. It's a pretty cool sight. Cool was the right word, Jessica thought. The wind had a sharp edge to it, and her gauze top didn't provide much protection. It was a good excuse to snuggle up to Ken, who had one arm stretched casually along the back of the boat behind her neck. It was the moment she had been waiting for all day, and Jessica was unselfish enough to acknowledge silently that she had Elizabeth to thank. Her twin had cornered Winston at the bow of the boat and was engaging him in conversation. Elizabeth glanced Jessica's way and winked. Jessica smiled gratefully. She turned to Ken. His blue-gray eyes were narrowed against the wind, which whipped his shaggy blonde hair back from his face. He looked even better than usual. Ken, I haven't gotten to talk to you much lately, Jessica observed, trying to indicate by her silky tone of voice that she would like to remedy the situation. Must be because I've been busy failing science, Ken joked. Me too, Jessica commiserated. I guess Mr. Russo didn't think it was enough punishment to have to go on this field trip in the first place. He made us both scribes for our teams. I don't know about you, but I'd been planning to get in as little work and as much play as possible today. Ken laughed. Me too. The boat took an extra hard bounce across a large wave, and Jessica found herself thrown against Ken. He put an arm around her to steady her and then left it there. Ken's body next to hers made Jessica's toes tingle with excitement. She was plenty warm now. Ken seemed to be feeling the same electricity. It's been a while, Jess, he began thoughtfully, looking down into her expectant eyes. Since we, you and I, did anything together, just the two of us. Remember the homecoming dance sophomore year? Do I ever, Jessica giggled. You ran out of gas driving me home. And I thought you planned it so you could be alone with me. Ken grinned. Until I left you in the car while I walked to the nearest gas station by myself, that is. Right. Jessica knew that getting Ken to stroll down memory lane was the right idea. And remember, she said with a meaningful smile, that night at the beach disco last spring? At a big party at the Oceanfront Dance Club, Ken and Jessica had danced up a storm together. They had ended one slow number out on the deck under the stars. Caught up in the moment, they had shared a long, warm kiss. Ken did remember. Jessica saw that. The look in his eyes was warm enough to start a forest fire. Hey, Jess, he said in a husky voice. Bruce might be putting together a party on Friday night. Would you want to... Ken was cut off in mid-sentence as the maverick hit another giant swell. This time, the wave caught the small boat broadside. There were shouts as water washed clear across the deck, soaking everyone on board. The fire that Ken and Jessica had been starting was put out with a sizzle. Jessica was cold, really cold, right down to her bones. Her teeth chattering, she looked around her. The waves were twice as high as they had been when they left Anacapa Island just a quarter of an hour earlier, and a thick fog had materialized. All of a sudden, the rising storm wasn't fun anymore. It was downright scary. Captain Marsden was on his ship-to-shore radio, shouting to make himself heard over the roar of the wind. I think we might be in trouble. I'm going to keep the line open. Be ready for an SOS. Just then, an enormous swell washed over the boat, nearly capsizing it. Jessica screamed and threw her arms around Ken's neck. 
Ken gripped the railing tightly with both hands to keep from being swept overboard. The boat was filling rapidly with water. The engine had stalled, and Jessica could see Captain Marsden pulling uselessly on one of the levers on the dashboard. A moment later, he turned around. "'We're going to have to evacuate!' he shouted, raising his voice above the howl of the wind. There were gasps of fear, and Lila screeched. Captain Marsden lifted a hand. "'Stay calm. I'm radioing for help and will be picked up by the Coast Guard in no time. Just buckle your life jackets tightly and do your best to stay in sight of the Maverick. She may stay afloat, but I can't be sure.' There was a mad rush for the life jackets. Mr. Russo started hauling rubber lifeboats and plastic oars out of the charter boat's storage bin. Ken helped Jessica slip her arms into a canary yellow life preserver and then put his arms around her in a protective hug. They stood up to their knees in cold water, barely able to keep their balance on the sinking boat. Don't worry, Jess, Ken said. We'll be fine. Jessica was more excited than anxious. Captain Marsden had said the Coast Guard was coming, so there really wasn't any danger involved, she thought. But talk about romantic! She and Ken Matthews, soaking wet and clinging to each other in a tiny lifeboat in the middle of a raging sea. Mr. Russo had pulled the tab on the first lifeboat, and it inflated rapidly. Okay, he yelled, two people and two oars to a lifeboat. Jessica and Ken pressed forward along with the others. Then Mr. Russo added, Buddy system! Buddy system! Jessica groaned. Ken gave her a last squeeze and then dashed over to join Enid, leaving Jessica with Winston. Four lifeboats and eight students had already gone over the side of the Maverick when Winston grabbed Jessica's hand. Here I am, buddy, he said in a tone that was half jovial and half scared. Never fear, I'll save you. That's what I'm afraid of, Jessica grumbled, but there was no time to bicker. Mr. Russo had the second to last lifeboat inflated. He and Captain Marsden would take the last one. Jessica and Winston climbed over the side of the Maverick and jumped into the lifeboat. Winston had a precarious hold on the oars he had grabbed from the science teacher. As he settled himself in, he nearly knocked Jessica out of the lifeboat by jabbing her with an oar. Watch what you're doing, Jessica yelled at him. The wind whipped a strand of wet, salty hair into her mouth. She spit it out, adding, I swear, Winston, you're more of a health hazard than a tidal wave. The storm was growing more violent by the minute. There were towering waves as far as the eye could see. Jessica and Winston's lifeboat bobbed wildly on the water, one minute rising way up and the next sinking so low that they temporarily lost sight of the Maverick and the other lifeboats. As her lifeboat rode to the crest of a swell, Jessica saw Elizabeth waving at her through the fog. Jessica waved back, glad that her sister was secure in a boat with Aaron. The other boat dipped out of sight and then reappeared again a moment later. Elizabeth, her face anxious, was still waving furiously. Now Aaron flailed his arms, too. We only have one oar, Aaron hollered. Does anyone have an extra? Jessica gripped the sides of the lifeboat, her heart in her throat. What if Elizabeth and Aaron were swept away, unable to maneuver their boat with just one oar? Then Winston let out a triumphant shout. We've got one, he waved the oar over his head. I took three by mistake. Jessica was so thrilled she almost, but not quite, felt like giving Winston a hug. Now they just had to figure out how to get the oar to Aaron and Elizabeth. Their lifeboat was only 15 or 20 yards away, but there was a wall of threatening waves between them. Without speaking, Jessica and Winston each grabbed an oar and began paddling furiously in Aaron and Elizabeth's direction. It was slow going. They would make some progress, and then a wave would push them back again. Finally, they were only a few yards apart. Elizabeth and Aaron clapped their hands and cheered. Winston and Jessica to the rescue, Elizabeth cried. Don't speak too soon, Winston called. He was holding the oar out at arm's length, but it still didn't quite reach. 
I'm going to have to throw it to you. Here it comes. Winston stood up in the lifeboat. He bent his knees to brace himself, poised to toss the oar. Elizabeth and Aaron looked like baseball players ready to feel the fly ball. At that moment, a swell hit Jessica and Winston's lifeboat. Winston's knees buckled and he lost his balance. Jessica tried her hardest to steady the lifeboat, but it was no use. As Winston fell heavily to one side, the lifeboat capsized. The last thing Jessica saw before she hit the icy water was the look of terror in Elizabeth's eyes. She tried to hang on to the overturned lifeboat, but her hands slipped off the slick rubber. Jessica felt as helpless as a rag doll when a churning wave hit her full force and carried her away from the lifeboat. End of chapter 3